patients with cancer and with palliative care needs do often do not have access to symptom control medicines. Peer-to-peer -peer learning has also been a tool that has now caused other people mm. to go back and do what they should do. A multi-pronged approach again to funding. My name is Zainab Shinkafi Bagudu. Um, we're conducting this interview in collaboration with Onko Daily uh, to unite against cancer. The aim is to hear about the good work that many able advocates across the world, many able scientists and researchers are doing to improve cancer control and reduce the burden of cancer as it currently is. Today we're having a chat with Dr. Emmanuel Eureka, who is the, should I say, Mr. Palliative Care in Africa. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to, <laughs> he has. So we have been talking about different aspects of cancer control. And mm -hmm. I believe this is the first interview that we're going to dedicate to that end of the spectrum. Uh, that might not be so unusual for you because, as we know, palliative care is one of the least uh, focused on areas, especially for us in low middle income countries, despite having a very high burden of cancer and a high mortality. And the majority of the patients that we see actually need palliative care. But we yeah. see so many cancer control plans that do not focus on that spec end of the spectrum and do not allocate adequate resources. So without taking away from the crux of your conversation, I want to start by welcoming you, thanking you for all the work that you do uh, in Uganda, in Africa, and across the world. I want you to give us a brief background of yourself. I have a very long bio, two pages of you here, the Executive Director at the African Palliative Care Association. He's a board member at the Worldwide Hospice Palliative Care Alliance, the President of Coastal Board Hospital, uh, Clinical and Country Director at Mild May International in Uganda from 2022 to 2011. He has extensive experience both in and out of government. But beyond what I have mentioned, he's also met, he has committee memberships in WHO, UNICEF, UNAIDS, and so much more. Please tell us a little bit, maybe with focus on your research experience that I haven't touched on. You're welcome, Doctor. Thank you very much. Um, it's my pleasure to be here and to talk about palliative care on the continent. Uh, thank you for that kind introduction. My entry into palliative care was through the HIV route, where I spent a lot of time uh, working on the HIV uh, problem in Africa. Palliative care is a major need for people with cancer in Africa because more than 80% of our patients present late, but also because of the symptom burden that patients face, whether they are being treated for cure or they are just being given palliation. Um, the other challenge that we, we, we see on a daily basis is the fact that patients with cancer and with palliative care needs do, often do not have access to symptom control medicines, especially the pain control medicines that are internationally controlled, as well as access to radiotherapy, both for uh, cancer palliative care emergencies and for radiotherapy for palliation. So those are key issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. I think um, a lot of people do not even really appreciate the depth and the meaning of palliative care. 
and the modalities that can be used right at the end there, you mentioned um, the use of radiotherapy for palliative care. And that is something that is often uh, not totally understood. Uh, we mm -hmm. hope to reach a lot of lay people with this, audience, with this uh, uh, interview and create more awareness around these kind of issues. So of mm -hmm. course, in your explanation, you spoke about palliative care and palliative care is really that specialized arm of medical care that focuses on providing relief from pain and other symptoms of serious illness. And it can also help to cope with the side effects of the treatment. So thank you very much for that. So You're doctor, welcome. you have led um, you know, the organization in expanding palliative services across several African countries. Can you share, um, or maybe before we, we go to that vision, let me start by asking, having served on so many technical committees at institutions like the WHO, UNA, uh, and so on, how have these experiences influenced your approach to developing first and implementing palliative care programs across Africa? So with that question, you can give us a little bit of insight into the work that you're doing across Africa in, with regards to palliative care. I mean, citing significant examples of a policy of initiative that has uh, benefited from your being on it. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Of course, at country level, the major starting point is governments having a defined policy for palliative care. We've supported several countries to develop their national palliative care policies, and that is uh, the summary of that work is published in eCancer. But just to mention a few of the countries, the very starting point was Rwanda. We worked with Rwanda to formulate their national palliative care policy. Then we had uh, Eswatini, which was by then called Swaziland. And then we had um, uh, um, uh, Zambia, Malawi, Mozambique, uh, Tanzania, and then uh, Botswana. Uh, so all those are countries which we worked with to set up national palliative care policies. We've also worked um, with countries in partnership with other support from other entities to improve access to controlled medicines that are needed uh, for palliative care. For example, we, we, we've worked with the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime to improve access to controlled medicines in Democratic Republic of Congo. That has been our recent project that we started during the COVID pandemic, and that involved training uh, healthcare providers in 10 hospitals across DRC and uh, working with them to develop um, to the level of even developing uh, model guidelines that are now available even on our websites, which um, health workers can use to um, to improve access to controlled medicines and not only for palliative care but, but for other associated conditions like for those who have mental health issues, those who have substance use disorders. So we used the capacity that was provided then to develop a tool that can be used across the board. We've also had teams from Rwanda, from Botswana, from Zimbabwe, from Malawi, from Kenya, working with us and looking at the mode of access to oral liquid morphine in Uganda, and then them going back and trying to do the same in their countries. We also run a scholarship program where we fund scholarships in partnership with global partners in care so that we can build on the workforce, on the palliative care workforce in Africa. And we've funded uh, African practitioners to study at uh, Makerere and University of Cape Town uh, and Mild May Uganda at Cape Town. They do the masters as well as Makerere together with Hospice Africa Uganda and their institute, they run certificates, diploma, bachelor's, postgraduate diploma and master's degree. 
and then at Mild May Uganda there is a postgraduate diploma in pediatric palliative care. We, we currently have advertised master's degrees uh, in palliative care for nine uh, uh, candidates from Africa so that um, they, we can develop more capacity. Uh, the other aspect in which we intervene is by running a small grants program. We, every, every year, with funding from the True Colors Trust, we provide small grants to 20 um, palliative care service providers in Africa. These are competitive small grants where people can have access to medicines, they can train their staff, they can buy equipment, they can extend services to children and in the rural so areas where we, we do that. And for the small grants particularly, we usually advertise in February and uh, in August. So end of August, for example, end of August, beginning of September, the next cohort of uh, organizations will be uh, invited for application. So that's the range of the services we, we provide, but we also do research. Research with our partners, universities in Africa. For example, we've done projects with Makerere University, with the um, University of Cape Town, King's College London, uh, University of Leeds, um, University of Birmingham. And we, we do that in partnership with the implementers across Africa. We've also had a research study that is looking, we had a study that looked at an app, a mobile app on patient health work interaction. And that study was multi-country. It happened in Uganda, uh, Zimbabwe, um, Nigeria and India and we had expertise from all those countries working together to to pilot and improve that app. So at any one time we have several research projects going and the findings of those studies are also published on our website. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.